I'll try to film this as best I can. Um, this is probably going to be doing it over a couple days, but um, a few people are asking how I do a side cut start to finish. Um, I haven't really had a straightforward one yet, but most of them nowadays aren't really straightforward, so I thought I'll make the video. But anyways, what I would usually do, obviously they depend site to site. Um, everyone's different. Um, and depending on the, if this steps in it or the elevation change, I would probably do things a bit different or if some are all cut and some are filled. Um, but this one is cut and fill and it's two separate levels and it's drop edge beams. So this is as bad as complex as your average side cut would usually be but on a normal side if you could access either side I would start at the top first and work your way down um, reason being it's easier to cut your top pads first and then just drop your lines down and pull the rest down but in this sense I'm going to have to start at the bottom and work my way back up but the ground is pretty rocky over there where the drop edge beam is going so I would normally even if I was starting from the bottom I would try and cut the drop edge beam first anyway so I can sit at the lower level and get the drop edge toe right down to level without sitting up on the higher pad trying to dig down so probably speed up through the video just roughly what I'm doing but yeah, I'd always start with the, the perimeters first, dig your perimeters down the level, and then it steps back to fill, so I'll run your fill out in layers, track rolling as you're going up, and then spraying lines again and cutting back for drop edge. Uh, so what I'd usually do is, you want to be sitting level, as much as you can. Um, so, what I would usually do is, yeah, spread me fill out. So, wherever I'm going to be sitting, I can be sitting uh, reasonably level. sit on that line and, and dig it through but um, it's easy enough to just do again get the bucket nice and square trim it straight down the line just bang straight down and I'm not gonna hit that fence whereas even if I was sitting down here digging Towards the fence, I might not have enough room uh, between where my star pickets are to actually get the bucket vertical as well. So by doing it this way, I can get in, angle away from that um, the fence there, and still chop this wall to get this corner out. And I've got the bucket facing away from the fence, so if um, anything happens, everyone knows that controls can be touchy. Um, when you're trying to do fine shit, all it takes is one like quick sneeze and you fucking knock down that fence. Um, so, as well as being faster, it's a lot more of a safer way to go about it. What I'd probably do in this scenario is I'll yeah, dig this corner out. <coughs> Again, digging this out because 
starters it's hard um, struggling to sort of break it out with the tiger teeth on um, and it's a lot easier to dig it like this than it would be if I was sitting um, up here or wherever the pad is and then I would only sort of be filling out to get enough compaction there anyway that I wouldn't want to sit all the way out here and have Phil coming back to here just so I can sit the excavator on the line. Um, at least this way I've got me natural ground and I'm going to fill coming up once it's placed and now I will fill over my original cut but once I can I can scratch my way in and I can find my cut line um, without even needing the pegs I can just dig down find my original cut and then um, fix up the top of the cut where the fill has been placed to suit it. Whereas if I done it the other way around and just placed the fill and tried to dig it, I would um, yeah, have to just follow my lines and hope that it's in the right spot. See now that this is dug, um, I would have had to lose my pegs behind me um, and see that's all the way curled out, there's no way I would have been able to dig that anyway. So there's situations where you can't um, sit along the line and that's just a, an easy way to do it while giving yourself the most amount of room. So now I can uh, make sure I'm sitting on my line. square up the rest of this cut this way. <laughs> See, I put my pegs out. I did check the levels with my laser and it zeroes out around here somewhere. So what I'll do in this case, because it's hard there and obviously by the time it gets down here it's probably going to be soft, um, I'll dig my line through so I know it's bang on this way and wherever it daylights out here. Then I'll come back and I'll throw these pegs back in, in these corners so when I fill up I can find my corners again because there's not enough natural hard rock to dig back into, I'll never find it down here. And, um, and then, yeah, you'll come unstuck, so. starting to get a bit thick down here so I'll thin it out a bit, track it and then um, keep going but basically what I'll do now is I'll, I'll check a few levels um, if you can't see levels very well you would have checked levels a lot more than I have been but yeah I'm going to go out check levels, I'll put them pegs back in um, because it's yeah basically where the top soil is now so throw them back in for when I fill up the next next bit and I know where to come back to. So when I'm 
filling up these, I'll obviously you're filling past um, your drop edge cut line. Um, and when I'm cutting them, I'm usually sitting here and just trimming from the top down. It's awkward, but it's sort of the only way to do it. Um, and again, most people would probably just throw this in in one height and track roll it and that's it. But um, I don't know, I take pride in my work and I actually want it to be a quality job. So I, the time I save in not having to get out and check levels all the time, I can afford to build it up in layers to do a proper job. But I would then, yeah, just grab another another bit or whatever place you fill out um, and yeah keep keep building your way up to roughly where it's got to be do is get in behind the fill where you can and um, obviously every machine is uh, different but um, I'm going to move a lot more dirt a lot faster obviously with the blade um, doing it this way so I can just blade it out to where I need it. digging along is when you're digging your trench like I can see between the space of a couple of meters I can see if I'm lifting up or if I'm cutting down whereas if I was to dig straight down here pull away go across straight down there pull away I wouldn't really be able to gauge that I'm digging a level part straight across I'd always be having to get out and check my heights um, because yeah, once you're moving along, if you chop down, chop down, chop down, chop down, by the time you get down to here, it could be 50 mil high or low, and you can't really see it. Whereas if you're sitting along the trench and you're pulling towards yourself, you can sort of see if you're going up and down. And then once you got your perimeter around the outside and you're basically zero the whole way around, um, I know for me, I can sit in the middle and pretty well pull the middle to within 50 mil uh, just by eyeing it in. But that you can't really teach, that's just a lot of seat time.
pretty well at hide. I'm gonna get out and check it anyway, but um, making sure you definitely pass your, your cut lines, compact it out over the cut lines. Um, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty close to level here where I needed to get the material from, but I'll check this and then get into trimming. Uh, just gave it a check on. We still have plenty of fat to trim off. Um, it's one thing you could do if you weren't as comfortable with the levels, you could continue this out um, anyway, which I'll probably sit over there and follow this through because I can see the level when I'm looking down that way. Trim that out and then if you wanted to at the start you could run another edge along there um, just getting out and checking as you go so then you've got a strip either side of the machine that's down to level and then you're just pulling the fat from the middle and you can get it pretty close um, I'm pretty confident to do it without it um, so as far as trimming itself goes does make it easier is depending on the material the most of the time you want to be trimming with the bucket um, so that's flat I'm going to be trimming with the bucket not vertical like this you want to be trimming it towards yourself a bit so when you are pulling back um, the bucket itself is skimming along the top and you're just making sort of finer adjustments whereas if you're trimming like this vertically um, if you're pushing down hard on the bucket um, the bucket's going to dig in and you're going to leave them like jagged jagged marks uh, when you're trimming and like holes everywhere basically so if you want to get um, the pads looking nice and tidy and level without too many holes you just want to have the bucket sort of facing you so you can um, minimize the, the up and downs in your in your pad really comes down to a lot of patience um, some people really don't give a fuck so they'll just go through and smash it smash it out doesn't matter what it looks like if they're leaving bits of dirt behind and whatever but um, this is just the way I do stuff and it's different to the way the next person will do it but when I'm trimming as well I'll never really trim in a straight line um, say I'm trimming in a straight line uh, then my material just gets palmed off to both sides and it'll leave little ruts either side of um, where I've just trimmed whereas if I'm coming through and going sideways I only leave a rut on one side so that I can come back through and trim around Trimming is just sort of a patience game. Take your time with it and you do a good job. If you rush it, it's a sloppy job. Um, and then the speed comes with experience, I guess.
here and I'll rip all this where I need it, but for the purpose of this video for now, um, I'll throw this up here and do what I've got to do. Um, cause it's too wet to get trucks anywhere at the moment, so I'm just doing what I can do with what I've got. Um, so yeah, I'll just pull the fat out where I can and keep trimming. If it means once I've got all of this finished, I've got to throw the back, the dirt back down here to finish the top one, and then throw it up again, then so be it. But um, it's just the way it's going to be done for this job at the moment, thanks to the weather we've been having. Check levels now. Um, just make sure I'm not doing anything too crazy, but there's no fucking no smoke and mirrors here, no GPS. Um, I'm actually using my phone, the GPS holder to hold my phone. <laughs> but I'll get out and check now, see how close we are. But you can see in the finish, um, using your bucket towards you leaves a lot nicer finish as it is I haven't even rubbed the arse of the bucket over any of this yet and it's it's all looking pretty smooth as is whereas if you're if you're using the tip of the bucket especially on stuff that's um that's fill especially that's only been track rolled then um <coughs> you're gonna have bumps up and down everywhere so I just went down and checked this pad um it's all in the green where I've trimmed so far, so I'll keep going with this. Um, but I'll throw the ripper on now and rip rip this pad here where I've got a fill. Um, so we're, when I'm trimming, I can just place where I need it so I don't have to double handle it. And then, yeah, get back and keep trimming phone's about to die though so I'll probably have to skip this part and um, come back when it's trimmed. So there it is, yeah. Pretty well trimmed. Um, haven't rubbed the heel of the bucket over it or prettied it up or anything because now I'll paint my drop edge on this edge and cut that out and then I will pretty up and finish off this pad um, and whatever's left over I left here leave a bit of fat because I've been filling this up and tracking it in after I uh, ripped it and placed the fill on there again leave some fat in this corner now so I can build up against here and keep going so what I do now after I've got the pad trimmed, um, I've marked my drop edge beam out now and this lower side so I'll show you how I cut that. So the drop edge is usually it's pretty hard, you can never really sit on the line. Um, if you didn't have a building next door or whatever, it'd be easier to sit on the lower side and, and pull it to wherever you might have had a stop off. The feel on the lower side from where you're running trucks or whatever. But in a lot of cases, you need to sit on the pad itself and dig it. So I usually would just yeah, dig it from the, the top and then you just digging sections. I can nearly sit on this line, so I'll just um, pull 
this one through. Just gonna take some of the fat off here so I don't really lose my line. And I'll throw the field to sort of one of the harder, harder parts of the cut if possible, whereas if I fucking like, throw it there, it'd be stupid because sitting there to cut the next drop edge and when you're trying to scrape the material off the field you could be going up and down the levels where if it's on a hard stand then you're just pulling it off easy.
like a few hours just to trim a pad like this then going to the extra effort of doing this is probably going to be slow and your client or your boss is probably going to get the shits with you for fucking around with it this much but like I trimmed this pad in however long it took me and I only got out of the cab twice to check levels so I can justify prettying stuff up with the less amount of time it takes me to check levels so again it's just everyone's personal preference on what they do and the finish they want to give but this is just the way I go about it so once I got my fine spread out all I'm doing is as you would you just spread the <coughs> run the cutting edge um, running the bucket flat so the cutting edge is, is roughly bang on grade so that you're not um, raising the level of the pad but you're just um, blading the fines into the holes basically and um, you should still be carrying the fines back and collecting them back in your bucket but you can see there it just leaves that glassy finish and covers up all the holes client and you're gonna leave with a sense of pride in your work as well um, as far as information goes that's about all I've I've got on this I'll probably speed the video up and um, just film finishing what I can off on this one and how I went about it but as far as information all I've done there is is basically all there was to it so now I'm gonna repeat the same steps on this one trim this top pad cut back the drop edges and I'll um, I'll just be stockpiling my material and then I'll be pulling the driveway down to this height and that's about it <laughs>
guys, if you want to know an area, I just needed a little bit of fill down there, so I pulled that down a little bit. Most of the time, if you dig uh, sort of these internal cut, uh, external walls, if you're pulling away from the cut instead of pulling towards the corner, um, you're going to keep your corner intact. But if you're pulling away, you most of the time that whole corner just crumbles off. So I would usually yeah, pull into the corner and it's easier to judge your, your depth when you're sort of looking at it this way I find than when you're sitting down at the level but I'll be digging now and throwing my dirt over to where I know it's level and then I can come down trim up all the rest of the fill over there and so I know it's level do the drop edges and then I can place all that fill down on that section there where it's where I know it's level um, to be loaded out. Um, I've cut the corner of this uh, where the actual slab is there. And then when I go to pull the driveway in, I'll sit down there in the bottom and I can pull the driveway um, at a grade. It's easier to see when I'm sitting down there. good um, this is where I'm going to be sitting my dirt to load out uh, into the truck so I want to get this bit right first um, but yeah I'll go check some levels now if it's right then I'll, I'll spray up my drop edges and then I'll cut them and um, when you're cutting them you want to be strategic with where you start as well so obviously I'm going to be putting the field sort of here so I will start back there and work my way across to where I'm going to be loading out. I just checked it, it's all looking good, so yeah, I'll come over here and start chopping these drop edge beams.
Yeah, that's basically it. You can see you can't always sit on the line, so you just got to make do with what you've got. Um, just get on with it. Um, so I'll pull my star pickets out now because I know where where my cuts are and keep going. See how it's all coming together here, and you can see the benefits of getting that bottom pad along where I've been filling up down to grade before you fill on top of it. So when you're sitting up here, you can see how challenging it is to trim down on that lower pad, um, and then you're up and down on the laser uh, trying to get heights and stuff. So by trimming that first and then filling on top of it you can just pull away the loose stuff on top leaving what was hard underneath and um, it's, it's saving you the headaches of trying to trim when you can't even see what you're looking at. Let's get out and show you. you can see. So you can see here too obviously it's not the cleanest cuts or anything. Um, if you wanted to go to the extra effort you could spin your bucket backwards and just chop the, chop the walls that way um, to leave a nicer finish but um, either way, yeah, only filling these pads and only getting track rolled, so they're expected to crumble anyway. So you've got that bit of extra stuff in the toes there, but apart from that, it's um, for what it is, it, they're back far enough that it doesn't really matter. So, so pull my pegs out, um, and then just check everything's all right. Check the bottom levels again; they're all good. So. Sort of on the home run here now. I'm just getting a little bit more here in this corner. And then, um, yeah, on the home, home stretch, pull the material out that's in the road, cut the driveway in, and that's about all there is to it.
guys, so that's about it. Um, all I can do until I get rid of this dirt, but um, yeah, as far as cuts go, this is about as complex as a house cut would probably get, I'd say. Um, yeah, so it's as much value as I think I can give here. Um, but yeah, all I'd be doing now is I can get my trucks in, load this bit of dirt out, keep my laser handy and just double check what I'm sitting on, but it was all at height, so um, yeah, pretty confident with that. Yeah, just boxed out for the concrete here in the driveway. Can't go down too much because we've got services here, but. Like for what it took, it took me, this took me around 10 hours. So a day's, a day's worth of work for all of this. Um, tracking and filling and um, just doing stuff in a way that's gonna be most productive just goes to show um, that it can be done <laughs> and leaving a finish like this as well. Um, but yeah, I hope it can uh, provide a bit of value for people starting out or whoever just gets their own digger and wants to go out on their own and doesn't know where to start. Um, definitely a lot of pointers in here to help you out. Yeah, cheers for watching.